So today I'm going to talk about hemangiosarcoma in dogs. Um, it's an aggressive malignant tumor of blood vessel cells that is almost exclusively found in canines. Um, they can theoretically arise from any tissue where, they are, where there are blood vessels, which is essentially anywhere in the body, but they usually appear in skin, soft tissue, the spleen, or the liver. They are highly metastatic and will frequently spread to the brain, um, but also to the lungs, the spleen, heart, kidneys, skeletal muscle, and bone. Um, this type of cancer can be classified in three different ways, um, and also it is the second most commonly diagnosed canine cancer after lymphoma, I believe. So the first classification is dermal hemangiosarcoma. Um, it's the skin form, and it's the most easily remo removed surgically, and it has the greatest potential for a complete cure. Um, it usually looks like a rosy red or an even black growth on the skin of the animal. Sometimes you might think your dog has a black mole, um, but sometimes it's not a mole, and it's a hemangiosarcoma tumor, so it's important to get those checked out. Um, so approximately one-third of these cases will spread internally in the malignant way, which is another reason why it's important to get those checked out, so they don't spread. Next is the subcutaneous hemangiosarcoma. Um, it's more complex and more aggressive than the cutaneous form that I just mentioned. Um, like the name indicates, it occurs under the top layer of the skin. Um, often these tumors will have bled into the subcutaneous space, which results in a very large and often bruised mass or swelling that's noted under the skin. Like shown right here, it just looks like he's covered in bruises. Um, and then 60% of these metastasize and spread internally. Um, so it's a lot more aggressive than the first one that I mentioned. And the last classification is visceral hemangiosarcoma. And this particular one accounts for 2% of all malignant tumors found in dogs, which I found really interesting. Um, and it can be mainly found in the spleen, the pericardium, and the heart. Sometimes it can spread to the lungs and the liver. Um, just depends. And then when it comes to the spleen, tumors tend to rupture and, and bleed out. Um, and it can also be heart-based, and there's also a risk of bleeding. Um, and this can, <coughs> sorry, this particularly can cause pericardial effusion, which is a buildup of blood and fluid in the per pericardium of the heart. Um, and that can add extra pressure onto the dog's heart, preventing it from pump pumping properly. This is an example of a visceral hemangiosarcoma on the spleen. Um, this is a really big one, but they come in different sizes and depends how developed it is. All right, so causes and symptoms. Although the dermal form is associated with sun exposure, um, it's still uncertain what, the, what causes the other forms, um, which are the most, ser most serious ones, which is why we want to know. Um, but since it's almost exclusive in dogs, and humans don't really have this cancer very often, it's very rare. Um, there's not enough research done on it, and we don't have that much information regarding the topic. Um, but since there's an incidence in several breeds, there is a genetic link that might be a cause, but there's no like, proof of that, and there's no actual research to, to prove it. Um, and then, yeah, that's it. So when it comes to symptoms, because hemangiosarcoma tumors are most often developed internally, um, there are few or like very, very little obvious symptoms before the onset of severe clinical signs. Um, and the signs of this disease usually result from the tumor rupturing and bleeding out. Um, the most common symptoms, however, are a lump under the skin, visible bleeding, weakness, pale gums, difficulty breathing, abnormal heart rhythms due to the pericardial effusion, and depression. Sometimes they stop eating too. Um, and then when the tumor is located on the spleen of the liver, the clinical signs are due to that bleeding, um, and it can cause anemia too. So, actually, when my dog was, before my dog was diagnosed, um, he had gone to the vet like two weeks before um, we found a little nodule in his cheek and we biopsied that, but before that, he was showing signs of it, but we thought it was hemolytic anemia, mm. or Addison's disease, because his cortisol levels were really, really low too. Mm. Um, so it can be misdiagnosed and sometimes it's too late to properly treat it once you find out what it is. 
um, which is why timing is everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, so, oh, in order to diagnose this cancer, the vet will begin with a complete examination of the dog, and this can include um, looking at the mucous membranes for signs of anemia, so if their gums are pale, um, that's an indicator. They would feel for abdominal swelling. They'd aspirate fluid from the abdomen to see if there's blood present. Um, they'd also draw, draw blood to see if it clots, if clots form. And further diagnostic workups can include CBCs, chemistry panels, urinalysis, x-rays of the chest and the abdomen. And a definitive diagnosis is only gonna come from a biopsy for a tumor. which can sometimes be tricky depending on where they're located, so. Um, and then treatment. So the treatment is completely dependent on the location of the tumor itself. Um, so treatment is more successful when the cancer occurs on the skin because it can be surgically removed. Um, and then oftentimes chemo is added on to that surgery um, just as a precaution. And then the visceral forms, however, they require a more aggressive treatment and even then the treatment will not likely to be curative. Um, if the tumor is identified on the spleen, when it's small enough, um, they can perform a splen like splenectomy, they can remove it, um, but that'll just cause other problems within the animal itself, but um, just depends. And then a pericardial tap may also be required to treat the fluid buildup around the heart so that they can pump blood a little bit easier. Um, and then surgery alone doesn't really make a significant difference because they're highly malignant tumors and most of the time they've spread by the time it's been diagnosed. Um, this is why combining surgery and chemo is one of the standard treatments. Um, also the two main drugs that are in the chemotherapy protocols are doxorubicin and cytosan. <laughs> now when it comes to the prognosis, Hemangiosarcoma is rarely curable and a long-term prognosis for dogs is very poor. Um, dogs with internal organ involvement who are treated with surgery alone live an average of only two months. Um, and then dogs who don't have any identifiable metastasis at the time of surgery and who are treated with chemo um, can live up to about six to 10 months. Um, so not a very long time. We always want our animals to stay with us forever, but Sometimes it is what it is, but hopefully we can find some cure. Question. There's a question. Um, I guess I have a question. Is it is it found in any age animal, or the older they get, the more likely? So, like when I read, because my dog was six. Six, okay. So he was only six years old, and just as a background, this summer he had an, a CCL um, surgery, okay. and we did like, CBC and the chemistry oh, the blood panel, work, yeah. and it was perfect. Perfect. Like everything was in the middle, the nothing summer. was red, yeah. nothing was blue. Perfect in the medium, in the um, middle range, okay. And after he got sick initially, white blood cell count was through the roof, platelets were like barely there, um, hemoglobin was barely there, so he was having a lot of trouble breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very fast acting. Yeah, it must have been, yeah. Um, so I do think it does affect older dogs a little bit more just mm -hmm. because they already have like certain issues with right. their age um but i think it still can affect any age sure because so. sure, i sure. i read an article that talked about like a one-year-old okay that had it. Like, yeah. almost it probably can happen at any age but the older you get yeah. the probably the more severe things are and so forth and so yeah. on and it's very common like golden retrievers mm -hmm. golden doodle german okay. shepherds um and can you imagine too. can you imagine trying to diagnose that away from everything else that could be leading well, to yeah, these symptoms yeah. it's like, like if, if my sister had not found the nodule on his cheek mm -hmm. they would never run the biopsy and right we would never know we would have been treating something or hemolytic anemia right and it, well the cancer killed him but the right. treatment that we gave him probably would have killed him as well sure so. yep 